Hi, and welcome to my channel. My name is Sarah Blackburn, and I'm the owner of Born to Create. I'm a full-time wood artist, and I love to do creative DIY home designs and share them with you. This video will show you how to make this modern sliding door for under $200. Here's a list of the supplies that you need. Everything in this video is based on the design I used. Feel free to copy mine exactly or get creative with your own. First, you need to measure the space that you're going to be building a door and then decide what size hardware kit you need. I was going for the more oversized look, so I went with an eight foot kit, leaving me enough room for a four foot wide door. The kit I bought on Amazon comes in a lot of different sizes and I'm very happy with the hardware and the quality of it. I also bought the door pool as well as the floor guide on Amazon and I linked those in my Amazon storefront. My kit did come with a floor guide, but I ended up using a different kind so I didn't have to drill it right into my floor. Instead, I drilled it right into my molding. I provided a list of tools that I used, but of course you can switch these out as, as needed. For example, if you have a table saw, that will be much easier to use than the rip cut circular saw that I used. I also provided a breakdown of materials. I had most of these on hand except for the larger pieces of wood. I got most of my materials from Lowe's, and they're pretty standard, so you could probably find these at most any lumber supply stores. Here's the breakdown of my cost. I tried to do this as budget-friendly as possible, and of course, this can vary greatly depending on the size of the door and the style that you're going to go with on your design. I ended up spending just under $200 on the whole project. I was able to save some money by using some materials that I already had on hand, like nails, glue, scrap wood, etc. I also ended up having to buy one additional quarter inch piece of plywood because I messed up. I'll explain that more further along in the video, but I really think that you can get it done with one sheet of four foot by eight foot quarter inch plywood. Once you have your hardware for the sliding door, make sure you have everything you need to install it. Follow the instructions that the kit came with for the installation process. It should explain if you need to have a headboard or not. Most often you will. I did because we have a pretty thick frame around of our doorway. It also helped to get securely into the studs. I painted my headboard the same color as I used on the door. It's called Black Fox by Sherwin-Williams. First I installed the headboard. I made sure to get exactly into my studs which are 16 inches apart. Use a stud finder to help you find exactly where you're going to need to install this. Then I added the rail right on top of the headboard. This really helped everything to get secure and it feels very sturdy up on the wall. I definitely recommend somebody helping you with this process. And I did all of this before I started on the door front. Next, I started designing the door. I used a full eight foot by four foot sheet of half inch plywood, but if you already have an existing door and it's the size that you want, I recommend just using that. You'll want to prepare the wood before you paint or stain it. I lightly sanded the top of mine just to make sure it was smooth enough to paint. This is where you can get extra creative with your design. This is the part that will show underneath the slats that you're going to add for the design. So whatever color you choose here will still be seen. I used Black Fox by Sherwin-Williams to match the headboard that I already installed. I did two coats of the paint to make sure I had full coverage. After it was dry, I then measured the center point of the door and drew a cross section across the middle of the door. Make sure to use pencil that you can erase or even chalk that can be wiped away. This center line made sure that I got my design in the correct spot. If you're changing up your design, this is where you're going to want to make sure to make some marks and design out your full piece. Next, find a sturdy flat surface to rip down your quarter inch plywood. I highly recommend using the Craig Rip Cut. It attaches to the front of the circular saw and acts as a guide to get a perfectly straight cut. I also recommend using clamps on either side of your plywood to help keep everything in place or have somebody hold it for you. It even has a measuring tape on it. I set mine to three inches for my slats. Be sure to rip the plywood in the same direction as the wood grain. You will want to get as many eight foot slats out of this as possible. 
Now for the fun part. You can start laying out your design. I started with the longest pieces, making sure I had a perfect 45 degree angle in the middle of the door using a speed square. And I worked my way down, cutting each of the slats at a 45 degree angle on the miter saw. I was able to get multiple cuts out of each slat, saving on material. Don't worry about the edges hanging off. Those will be trimmed later. Here's a closer look at the design. The middle is made up of 20 slats, 10 on each side of the triangle. So that's 10 right angles that come together in the middle. Use one of your eight foot slats on the front end. It stretches from the top to the bottom. The tip of the triangle will meet in the exact middle, following along the cross section that you drew earlier. There are 14 strips on each side of the triangle going vertically. Work your way from the handle side of the door to the outer corners of the triangle to ensure that everything is evenly spaced. You will need to trim the outer edges anyways, so don't worry about if it hangs off the edge. After all of your slats are cut to fit the design, give them a quick sand to tidy up the edges. I found it easier to do this the old fashioned way with a piece of sandpaper folded in thirds wrapping around the edges. I used glue and quarter inch tile spacers to help me lay out my design. My glue ended up freezing overnight when it was drying and it didn't stick very well. So I went through with a brad nailer and half inch brad nails and put one in each slat, actually two to three in each slat. So I either recommend using a very good glue or doing both and using nails and glue. Here's a time lapse of the gluing process. If you get the first two slats on perfectly, then everything else will line up the way that you need to. I made sure to follow a line all the way across right down the middle of the triangle. These are the tile spacers that I used. I bought them from Lowe's for $5 a while back. If you don't want to buy these, find something that you can use to evenly space all of the wood slats out, like some extra wood pieces. You will need to have plenty of spacers so you don't accidentally bump the design and shift everything. But this was a huge time saver and totally worth the money for $5. I used clamps and some scrap wood to hold the design down while it was drying and also give me a straight edge to nail against. Using clamps and a straight edge, go ahead and trim out your door with the jigsaw. Be extra careful about it ripping up the edges of the plywood. You can see in the picture I had some damage. That actually happened when I used the circular saw. So I recommend sticking with the jigsaw or if you use a circular saw, um, maybe flip it over before you cut to avoid it shredding the edges. I ended up replacing the slats that had damage, which is why I ended up buying an additional quarter inch piece of plywood and ripped it down. Using the straight edge will help you align the jigsaw up against it and get a perfect clean cut on each side. Lightly sand all of the edges that you just cut and then dust everything off to prep it for the stain. I usually take a brush and sweep out all of the grooves and then I take a mini blower and blow everything off. You could also use a vacuum too if you're worried about dust. I did one coat of stain, which was Min Wax Weathered Oak, and one clear coat. I do a lot of projects where I stain, and one of my best hacks is using off-brand magic erasers. I get a quantity of 100 off of Amazon, tear them in half, and use them as needed. The best part is you can just throw them away when you're done. They give a nice even coat and then I always go through with a rag and wipe up any extra stain. I link the brand that I used in my Amazon storefront. Once the front is dry, have someone help you flip it over. You can do whatever you want to the back. This is what I did with mine. I trimmed it and painted it. The reason I used 1x4s is because it created the correct thickness I needed for the hardware to go on. I also wanted to add some more stability. It is very plain, so I'm also considering adding something to it, like maybe some mirrors or something since it, you can only see it from inside the bathroom, which is near my closet. I installed my hardware after I brought it inside. 
That way I could measure exactly where to put the hardware on the door. I propped the door up on one inch pieces of wood to give me the right height off the ground. This worked perfectly. Here's the additional hardware I ordered from Amazon. The handle is large and heavy duty. It comes with a grip plate for the back and it was super easy to install. My rail system kit came with a floor guide. However, it was meant to be drilled straight into the floor tile. Since we didn't want to do that, I found that there's this one that you could attach to your wall or molding. It has two rollers on it and it makes the door slide like really smooth and also keeps it from swinging out. Both of these items are linked in my Amazon storefront and they're very affordable. I hope this tutorial has been helpful and inspires you to make your own. Let me know in the comments if you have any questions, I'm happy to help. If you want to see a lot of the behind the scenes of all of my projects, follow me on TikTok, Instagram, or Pinterest. Or you can also visit my website at borntocreate.com. I have an Amazon storefront on there, and I also have my own online shop where I sell my artwork. I have a ton of upcoming projects that I plan to share here on my channel. Please consider subscribing if you enjoyed this tutorial, and I look forward to providing more projects for you in the future. I will also be sharing some of my previous projects that went viral on TikTok.